We are the body. To start off tonight, or today, I want to be honest with you. I'm sluggish today. Willie, that's hard to believe, I know. What sluggish to me is probably 99% to (laughs) y'all. But I got some pain I've been dealing with. It's knifing me today. But I know what's happening. The devil's attacking me because they don't want this message to be heard. Because see, when you empower the people with knowledge and revelation wisdom, then things happen on God's behalf. So I rebuke the enemy for the attack he's given me, and he ain't stopping the message today. I don't care if I fall out at the end of it. So be it. The message is coming forth. That's right. <laughs> Let's put up Matthew 16. We'll be in the Amplified. Verse 13. Matthew 16, 13. Matthew 16, 13. Now, when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they answered, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Where the rubber meets the road, huh? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now when I read that scripture, my mind went back to when David had to go fight the Philistine. Who is this Philistine that dares defy the army of God with that boldness? I just think of Peter saying, Wait a minute, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God with boldness and conviction. Then Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church in the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth must be what is already bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. That's powerful words. So let's go back to this. I can just see Jesus looking at him, just as he'd be looking at us. Well, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? I want to know what you think. Who do you say I am? And what happened was this. You talk about Willie's faith message last, last week. Here's faith. Peter says, You're you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Wait a minute, Peter. Man didn't tell you that. You only know that by the revelation of my father telling you that. And here's what happened. We're in church. This is church. But you know, this is really just a building This is a place we have dedicated to meet, to share, to edify. There's plenty more down the street. They're all over. But see, today's world thinks that the church is what is empowered, the the, the organization. But see, we're the church. We are the church. We are the body. This congregation wouldn't function without all of its parts. 
So we are the body. But what happened when Peter said, you are, you are the Christ? I'm just going to paraphrase how Jesus might have answered him. Peter, because of your confession of faith, I will build my church. Church didn't start just to start to have a place to meet. The confession of Peter's faith began Christ's church. Faith moved him. Faith established the church. Do you follow me? Don't get told that a lot in today's world. But faith exercised. Faith established it. Let's go to Acts 1. Acts 1, verse 7. He said to them, It is not for you to become acquainted with and know what brings the things and events of time in their def definite periods or fixed years or seasons, which the Father has appointed by his own choice and authority. But you shall receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the very bounds of this earth. So what was it? He was instructing the apostles, you're going to witness something. You're going to witness something. And the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they'll be able to witness to his, thank you. they'll be able to witness not just what they know, what they've seen, what they have seen, what they have witnessed. Now, I'm going to go somewhere now that might step on toes. <laughs> but he didn't say to the apostles, now listen, I want you to establish this church over here. This, there's a building there, and I want you to go put a sign on it and says it's the church. In fact, let's see, it could be the Baptist church. Well, let, no, let's make it the Catholic church. No, let's make... He didn't say to the apostles, go make this building and we're going to call that the church. And he didn't stamp a denomination on it and say, here's the denomination. What he said to them is, you are going to be given the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to go out there, I'm talking about bold, and you're going to tell them who I am. You're going to tell them who I am. You are now the church. The church isn't man's doctrine. The church isn't a building. The church isn't a political power. You're the church. You're the church. You're the church. I'm the church. There's only one head of the church, and that's Christ. He is the cornerstone of the church. Remember that song, If We Are the Body? We all come to church expecting just to do church. Well, if that's all there is, I'm not coming back. Yeah. Pastor Bob, I love you, but I'm not coming back. I've got one instruction from God. Let's, no, let's make it two. Son, you need to get saved. That's number one. Number two, you need to tell people who I am. That is my goal. My heart's desire is that everyone will see his face. So my, my job is to spread the gospel. To tell people the good news. To let them know what the word of God says. And it doesn't have nothing to do with a, with a denomination. It doesn't have nothing to do with a cathedral building. 
It doesn't have anything to do with any of that. But man has got confused these days of what the role is. The same as governments wanting to take over your daily lives and tell you how to live, that's not the role of the government. See, I live my life, and I tell other things what it needs to do. The church, the church, the church, the church needs to be out there telling people about the gospel. And then the establishment of the church can follow suit. It's flipped lately. This is why the devil wanted to attack me today. He don't want people to know this. Why would I want you to let people know that so they would be empowered? See, a veil is over the, the, the Christian's eyes these days. They forgot what they've been empowered with. Empowered to do. The church. Don't think of the church as some mighty place. You're the church. You're the church. You're the church. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 2. Thirteen. If I ask you again, who are you? What's your answer? The church. I'll be there in one moment. <clears throat> but now in Christ Jesus, you who are once so far away through the blood of Christ have been brought near. Verse 14. For he is, he is our peace. He has made us both and has broken down the hostile dividing wall between us. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on to go spread the gospel? What are you waiting on to be the church? The wall was broken down. Verse 15. By abolishing his own flesh, the entity, the law with its decrees and ordinances, that he from two might create in himself one new man, one new quality of humanity out of the two, so making peace. One new man. What is that one new man? The united body of believers. The church. The church. We're waiting on the church to do something for us, but we're the church. <laughs> See, people come to church wanting the church to do something, not realizing they are the church. Yeah. Move in your empowerment. That's right. Amen. Verse 16. And to reconcile God both in a single body by means of his cross, thereby killing the mutual enmity and bringing the feud to an end. Verse 17, And he came and preached the glad tidings of peace to you who were afar off, to those who were near. Verse 18, For it is through him that we both now have an introduction by one, Holy Spirit that is, to the Father. Then verse 19, therefore, you are no longer outsiders. What are you waiting on? You're not going to have the perfect time when you should start moving. We're not in our glorified body yet, so you just keep on waiting, and you're going to miss the boat. You have to move now. Now. Therefore, you are no longer outsiders, exiles, migrants, and aliens excluded from the rights of citizenship. You want to know about your rights? There's your rights. To the citizenship of God. But you now serve citizenship with the saints, God's own people. 
consecrated and set apart for himself. And you belong to God's household. Who you want to hang around with? God, I want to be part of his household. I want to be part of his church. I want to be the church. I want to be part of his body. If I accepted him, his spirit dwells in me. He's in my body. Verse 20. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. You, you, yeah. me, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Oh, oh, I thought I was just supposed to sit in one of the rows and listen. <laughs> you mean I'm part of this thing? You don't have to be on the board be part of the executive team in some rule book that man made. God said, listen, you are built into this thing. You are built into this. Verse 21. In him, the whole structure is joined, bonded, welded together harmoniously, and it continues to rise. It's continuing to rise. But as, if we're seeking revival and more growth, listen, as this world starts to turn more and more to the left and uh, just shun God away, you're going to have to be stronger to grow more. As Michelle said, she's right about me. I'm bold. I'm going to tell you, even if you're going to kill me to tell you. Because this is the truth. This is the truth. And continues to rise into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to the presence of the Lord. Verse 22. In him and in fellowship with one another, you yourselves also are being built up into his structure. With the rest to form a fixed abode, dwelling place of God, in, by, through the Spirit. We are being built up. The one new man, the united body of believers, the church. The church is to be a people or community that the Holy Spirit dwells. So we can't keep on referring to the church as something that we're not. You know? Well, you know, I go, to ch- I go to church. That's great. You know, there's a lot of atheists that go to church. There's a lot of Satanists that go to church. They have their churches, too. They have, they have their established place. But I think I've already defined what God says about the church. The Christian is the church. The Christian is grafted into the body. Exactly. We are. Now, the veil, the veil is over the unbeliever's eyes. Now, if a veil is over your eye, You can't see me waving at you. But you can hear me talking to you. If I give you the word enough, something will end up penetrating. See, we have to spread the gospel, this good news. I can't wait for them to come to church. I have to bring the church to them. I have to be the church for them that day. I have to say, I'm bringing a message to you today. Because, see, I've been, I'm a Christian, so I'm part of the body. I'm part of the church. And being part of the body and being the church, 
I've been given special privilege to share God's word with you. To edify you. To lift you up. Not to tell you to come sign up for membership. We'll see if we want you. Whoops. Do you know why swap some people don't want to step foot in churches today? They don't want to step into those buildings today. But that's man's confusion. See, that, that, that's, that's a stamp on something that it shouldn't be there. This building, this place, dedicated where we meet in fellowship. And we bless this place. We want this place to be a place of worship. We, want, we claim it as holy ground. But if it's gone tomorrow, that don't mean the shield of faith is gone. We are the shield of faith. We are the body. We will go on with our message right up there on that hill. If the hill's gone, we'll meet somewhere else. The body. Willie's house, that's right. Now you have something to nominate. I'm telling you, this thing is so twisted, they glorify the building. They honor the building. They worship the building. I worship the building too. I worship Christ. I worship Christ. And I thank him that he dwells in me. And I can thank him that I've learned to love me. I've learned to love who I am, not always what I am, who I am. See, in this old body, sometimes I get in the way of where I should be with him, but one day that's going to be all gone, worked out. This old flesh is going to hit the road, and my new body is going to be in me, and I'm going to enjoy that time that everything is perfect. But we're here now. And these end times are rapidly approaching. And people's confusion about the church keeps them out of the church. That's where we have to set our feet firmly where we are. We are the body. Just like that song said, if we are the body, why aren't some of these things happening? Where's the healing? Where's the love? But we are the body. Like I said, if this building was gone tomorrow, that's fine. We still want to be meeting, fellowshipping, learning. It's all down the tubes if the building's gone. Peter, by your confession of faith, I'm going to build my church. Melanie, by your confession of faith, he started building your church. Amen. Willie, by your confession of faith, he started building your church. Amen. Pastor Bob, that day you got up out of that chair and walked up unannounced, he started building the church. You talking about a powerful thing, faith? Faith not only pleases God, it moves God. It moves God. This building don't move God. The bricks and mortar don't move God. Our faith stirs God. Spreading his gospel moves God. If we are the body. If we are the body. If we are the body. If you just want to meet to have a good time and feel good and go home. Whew, you're missing it. Now, but if you meet, get trained up, get edified, and then go out there and look at the guy who's down and out and say, there is a hope for you, young man, and his name is Jesus, and I'm here to tell you the good news, and I'm going to stand with you in this fight. 
if we, ain't, if we don't see you for six months, so be it. If you out there fighting for one soul, right. stay out there to fight. Right. Yeah. Right. We are the body. Right. We're the church. Now, I'm not knocking the order of the church. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother message. Pastor Bob goes over that all the time with us. I'm talking about what man is putting his head. I go to church, I listen, and then I go on about my daily life. You know, how many times do you hear, oh, well, you know, I'm all right, I go to church. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was brought up in church. I went to church, I stopped going, I went back to church. I'm part of this church, I'm part of that church, I'm this denomination, I'm that denomination. Trying to please man. Trying to please man. I thank God that he gave me a powerful church right here. Right. Amen. That's true. My wife is so strong and powerful, he's built up a magnificent church. That he bonded me with. And now together we got even a stronger church. And our kids are growing up into church. Why? Not just because they live with us. Our kids have accepted Christ. So their church is being built. <laughs> They're the church. They are the church. First Corinthians 12. First uh, Corinthians 12, 12. For just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts, and all the parts through many form only one body, so it is with Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Verse 13. For by means of the personal agency of one Holy Spirit, we were all, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, baptized, and by baptism united together into one body, and all made to drink of one Holy Spirit. For the body does not consist of one limb or organ, but of many. We're the body. How important are you? Very. I'll give you a, a, an example my dad told me one day. And this isn't knocking garbage men, because I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But no one really grows up going, you know what? I want to go to school, get an education, degree and all, and then I want to go collect garbage. I've never met anyone that says that. But my dad took me out in the street one day and watched the garbage man came by, handed them a three-liter Pepsi Cola, said thank you, and said, Son, do you know if we didn't have garbage men, your house would be filthy. We'd be living in smut. That garbage man is vital to us. Vital. Every part is vital to this body, to this church. When Pastor Bob says he feels it when you're not here, he feels it when you're not here. And one thing, dear my, when I see, and I've talked about this before, when I see the men missing in here, I feel the men missing in here. We need their part. Just like the gifts and the talents you have, those are good. But we need the parts all formed together, working in unity. Unity. Just, just think about it. If every church on the face of this planet would all at just one time no matter what their denomination, what their theology is, but at one time would just submit 
and say, Lord, your word is true. It is only your word that we're going to believe. It is only your word that we're going to act on. It is only your word that we're going to pray about. There's only one name we're going to call upon. Could you imagine the power that would be evoked at that moment? The power that would just, woo, my people are calling me. And I'm going to respond. That wall, like it, that scripture said, the wall has been, uh, that divided us has been broken away. But then what does man do? They, <laughs> let me put my wall over here. And there's a wall here, and there's a wall here. Like you said, if it's not the King James Version, there is no version, right? You know, you know if you're not this, you know, if you're not this religion, you're nothing to us. Well, you're only going to be saved through works. All of it untrue. Now, there's people who want to shoot me now for saying that, but it is untrue. There's one way to the Father is what the scripture says, and that's through Christ Jesus. Amen. And then once you come to Christ Jesus, you've been made righteous. There's no more degree you have to accomplish. You have been made righteous. Now, you'll go through a natural maturing level. You'll grow in Christ. But once you've committed, it's over. You're in. You're in. You're accepted. You made co-heir with Jesus Christ. Co-heir. Co-heir. Not half. Co-heir. Everything he has is yours. Everything. Everything. Being part of the body. Now that sounds like good stuff. I want to be part of that body. You mean all the promises? Yep. All the rewards? Yep. Eternal life with you? Yep. Man, how can I be part of this body? Well, you already are, son. See, people don't know they're part of the body. Even when they get saved, they don't know they're part of the body. They still have this thing in them. Well, I'm not cleaned up yet. I'm not able to go out there and spread the gospel yet. Because, see, someone might challenge me, and I won't know the answer. I don't know the answers. He don't know all the answers. None of us combined know all the answers. But God's word is the answer. By faith, Rachel said, is the answer. See, I used to always want to know the answer. And then I stopped caring about the answer. And I just accepted that there is an answer. Amen. One day, I'll know everything I want to know. And I won't even really care about all of it then. Because, see, you'll be in fellowship then with the Father. Living harmoniously. The church. The body. Not the Shield of Faith great organization over here on Foster Creek Road. No, the body. This is the Shield of Faith. All these parts, all these limbs, everything in here, functioning together, exercising on his behalf, reaching out in faith to move God. You know, people go, well, what can I do? I can't make God do anything. I can't move. Nope. God's wanting to hear from you. He wants to be stirred by you. That's not my opinion. It's in the Bible. There's plenty of scriptures and references to it. God's been moved by his people. We are his people. We are the church. When he said, you know, this is my son who I am well pleased. You know what? Now he's talking to us too. He can't talk to Jesus as one and talk to us separately. Once we become saved, he has to talk to us the same, the same, the same. That's the only way he wanted it. That's the only way he wanted it. And you remember my message one time about the angels. A lot of people in these cultures think angels are more valuable than humans. Wrong. He didn't have fellowship with the angels. The angels were his servants. We were designed for fellowship with him. Fellowship with God. We are the body. We are the church. What is your assignment? Get saved. And once you're saved, 
tell people about him. You can do all this other stuff, have all kind of degrees, and look at everything I did over here. I helped build a church. You know, I constructed one. I put some people in that one over there. You can say all that, all that, which in itself can be good. But all that means nothing if you aren't walking every day knowing that you are the church, that you have been made part of his body, and that you can boldly, faithfully look someone in the eye and say there is a living God, and there is a Savior, and his name is Jesus. And if you want your life to go accordingly, you need to repent and ask him into your life. Be bold enough to tell them. Again, you don't have to know all the answers, but as long as you got the, the weapon, <clears throat> the weapon, the answer's in there. The word. The word. How powerful is the word? It's even above his name. That's powerful. My word is even above my I'm God, but my word is above my name. There's no going back on that, folks. You got to study these scriptures out. You got to seek out the meaning. It's just not to be like a whip to whip you. People have thought, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm whipped by the scriptures. No, the scriptures aren't to whip you. They're to edify you, to strengthen you, to build you, to let you know who you are in Christ. We are the body. Lord, I can't heal nobody. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm saved. Christ is in me. I'm the church. Oh, man, I can pray for you to be healed. You got to know that you can pray for people to be healed. You have to know that you can pray for people to be stirred on the inside. You know the things I remember most about my life aren't the things I did. It's those few things I didn't do when I should have done them. There was that guy over there standing over a gravesite, probably 15, 20 minutes and not moved. I should have went over there and prayed for that man because something in him is missing and he's, he's depressed. And that scarred me when I didn't act. I won't do that again. You can't be there for everyone all the time, but when the moment's there, you need to be equipped. You've got your armor on. You know who you are. You have the word inside of you. You move. You act. I'm not talking about no little, you know, let's have a meeting and social. I'm talking about bold evangelizing when the time is there. When that person is at the end of their rope. I'm here to tell you the good news. And I can tell you the good news. This is why. Because I am part of the church. What church do you go to? God's. <laughs> that church. What denomination? I'm Christian. Well, what denomination? Christian. What denomination? Christian. I'm a Christian. There is only one denomination, and that's if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you're going to hell. That's as simple as it is. God said, if you, hey, listen, there's two choices. You're on the path to hell, and you got one way to stop that. That's accept my son as your personal savior. That's how you go to heaven. That's it. I didn't write it, but I know it's there. It's in the scriptures. I don't get caught up in man's doctrine. I don't get caught up in his religious system. I get caught up in the Word of God. I know it's true. I don't always feel like the church, but I am the church. I don't always feel righteous, but I am righteous. I don't always feel powerful, but I am powerful. I don't always feel bold, but I am bold. I know my destiny. My destiny is already in place. 
It's the eternal life I'm enjoying right now and that I will continue to enjoy for eternity, upon eternity. But while I'm in the midst of that, I'm ready to share who Christ is and what he can do for you. Not what the church establishment can do for you, but what Christ, who is the church, can do for you. What fellow believers can do for you. So if I didn't do anything today other than just invoke something in you to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been following this system of man. Man ain't right. <laughs> He's wrong in this area. If you don't believe so, just walk out here and walk into every different establishment you can. You'll see how off track they are. But if you want revival, if you want revival, right here. Starts right here. Starts right here. What are you doing at your church? Well, we're doing different things, but let me tell you what I'm doing for my church. <laughs> here's where I'm going for my church. You know, here's what I'm doing. Do you know anyone who isn't saved? Yeah, what's their name? Let's go talk to them. Again, we can have church sitting right at our home. There's 15,000 stations. They all got church programs. We can have church right at home. If that's all there is to it, but there's more to it. We meet here to get edified, to get trained up, to get shared the gospel with, and to boldly walk back out of those doors. Not slightly walking by, but looking, 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 and listening for the opportunity. I don't beat no one over the head with that Bible, but when the opportunity presents itself, I'm right there. I'm right there. I don't know if you all remember the story, but the man who chased me down, chased me down for the Fireproof right. movie. That man chased me down. I said, Lord, they won't have to chase me down again. I'll be looking for him. I'll be looking for him. And I do that. I look for the opportunity. Because, see, I can keep on going. We can do what I do here. I can get up once in a while and share the message for believers. And that's only good enough so far. Pastor Bob, you know what his desire is? Just save a soul. Save a soul. Help save a soul. Bring someone to Christ. He's a pastor because he was chosen to, but he just wants to help someone come to Christ. You ready to do that? Amen. If the case presents itself, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to proclaim not that you are a member of a church, but you are the church. Not only that you just believe in Christ, but I am part of Christ's body. His Holy Spirit dwells in you. That means he's part of you. Different idea of the church. Different teaching message about the church. But it's true. You. You are so precious to him that he made you part of everything that he is. How awesome is that? God said, you are so precious to me, I'm going to make you part of everything that I am. Everything. Everything. So I hope I didn't stomp on toes today. I hope I didn't. And the idea wasn't to slam the church in different areas, but we have to know. Like I said, if this building wasn't here tomorrow, we would not stop. I wouldn't. If you never saw me again in this building, don't think I'm backslidden. I went out to go conquer something. There's some ground out there that's not holy, that needs to be conquered. Proclaimed as holy ground. Not just the ground, that's a body, that's a per there's a human being out there. That needs to be claimed. Exercise it. Exercise it. If we are the body, like that song said, well, the answer is we are the body. The difference is, are you going to take your body, get off the sofa, and go move? Amen. And share who Christ Jesus is with people. Simple, not complicated.
Do not be afraid of the enemy. Do not be afraid of people. His message is so vital, you have to overcome fear. You have to overcome shyness. You have to be willing to share the message. What church really is. What being part of the body really is. What being saved really means. I thank you for the time today. I thank you that you stood by me. I feel off kilter still because the enemy still attacked me through the whole thing. But he's been defeated just like when Jesus stomped on the serpent. <laughs> Satan, get behind me. The message does not die. It keeps on. Thank you.